Hi, Karen McElroy here sharing with you today about wild foods and how we can get them in our diet. Obviously, wild greens are usually called weeds and unfortunately, they've been relegated to the scrap heap or the compost heap in many cases. But weeds are often the most super nutritious foods we can get in our diet, full of all the sorts of minerals and trace elements and phytochemicals that are so good for us. So I'm going to share with you a few weeds that I like to include every day in my salads. Um, and we'll find out the benefits of each one, how to identify them, because you've probably got lots of them growing in your garden. And I'm really keen for you to get more of the superfoods in your diet. And so let's have a look. Okay, so this is one of the little patches in my garden that I allow to just be a little weed patch because a lot of the weeds that are growing in here are really salad greens that I throw a few different ones into my salads of. So some of them you probably know of as, as pests, as I said. And that is my rooster who is wanting to video bomb here and it will try and ignore him. So I'm just going to zoom in here on this one which is commonly known as cobbler's pegs, uh, farmer's friends. It's known for the very annoying little seed heads that it gets on it as well which I can show you right there and they stick all over the clothes when you walk past them. My dog gets covered in them uh, but aside from that the actual little flowers here are super high in vitamin C and also high in uh, a lot of amazing chemicals. So this plant is really a medicine trove. And so we can include just a few leaves. It's actually quite a tasty green. It's not um, super bitter, but it is a distinct flavor, but it adds really well to different sorts of salad greens as well. So like all of these weeds, using these wild foods into our salads, if we mix a whole different lot in, we're getting a lot of variety, which everyone knows I'm big on getting as much variety as we can in our foods, but we also don't have the overpowering flavour of one particular flavour, so we can easily include more of them in the diet. Uh, this one here, which has the little yellow flowers on it, um, these flowers are really delicious to include as well, and the leaf of it, it's been a little dry here, so it's probably not so easy to see, but I'll see if I can pick uh, one of the small leaves here. It looks a little bit like... A sort of a, a little bit like a dandelion but it's um it grows up the stem quite differently it tends to have these tall shooting flowers as well so there are two in here some chickweed growing in here as well there's not a lot of it left it's getting at the end of winter here i'll just see if i can find a little bit in here you can see that's a little bit of chickweed right there which i can pick um and that's actually quite a delicious little leaf. It's a little bit more juicy, uh, but that one can be included as well into all your salads. So I'm going to have a little wander up to another patch where I've got a couple of other ones I'd like to share with you. Just before I do that though, I really enjoy using flowers in cooking as well. And so one of the ones I do have growing here is uh, this one, which is pineapple sage. This needs a good cut back at the moment, but you can see the beautiful flowers there. They do taste and smell like they've got a lovely nectar in them and they add beautiful colour to your salads and they give you a little um, little burst of a sort of a pineapple-y flavour, I guess you could say. So they're great to include as well. And while I'm speaking about flowers, I've just spotted another little plant here. Now this pink flower, you can see it's really pretty. And this belongs to the sour grass plant. So these, which is a sort of juicy stemmed. Now you can sort of see that it's got these big petals, like an oversized clover really, that are heart shaped. So you can eat the whole of this plant. This stem is very juicy. Now it tastes like a beautiful lemony flavor. It's juicy, quite astringent, but delicious. And even the bulbs, it grows in from little bulbs in the grass um, and you can dig those bulbs up, which my son discovered the other day, um, and they taste incredibly sweet and juicy and nice. So they're also, this whole plant can be used. And it's a common weed that people pull out, but I do want you to look around your garden and see what ones you can eat. And these beautiful little petals, as you can see, um, add such beautiful colour and juicy lemon flavour into your salads as well. All right, so let's go. I'll go and have a look in a different section of the garden and be back. Okay, so this weed here is known as a nodding tops and it's a particularly lovely uh, wild plant to put into your salads and things. You can also cook them up as, as greens in a stir fry. So this leaf here is a has a lovely carrot-like flavour 
super nutritious and juicy, this little guy I found yesterday when I was doing some watering. So like all uh, weeds, they tend to volunteer themselves where we don't necessarily want them, but it's great to start including them as allies in your medicine and in your kitchen as well. So that nodding tops has a little flower that you can't see. I think I might have another specimen I just spotted over here near my garage. Um, and the little flower heads you can sort of see starting to form there. But if we just come across here, we can zoom in on another one that has those lovely little flowers. And you can see why it's called nodding tops because these little flowers hang down and they nod in the wind. So that's sort of the full specimen there. You can see how they will just come up anywhere. Any little crack, to, <laughs> crack of ground, uh, these plants like to find their way in. But once we start seeing them, as allies and uh, friends on the path if you like we can start using these plants more and getting not only good nutrition but plant medicine as well and as i said these weeds tend to just grow where they please so if you look here at the front of one of my little herb and veggie beds here growing happily along the front here are some weeds that haven't been uh, cut back yet but we can include those in the diet so they're super good there is a native chickweed there um, that one I don't find quite as tasty as the the uh, European chickweed. The one that I do recommend not eating, so this is the blue top. And you can see it's got those little, it's a very small flower, that one. It's normally quite a bit bigger. But blue top is a little bit toxic, and that's not one you'd want to include. And as a bit of a golden rule, you'll see that growing much bigger specimens than this little one here. But as a golden rule, when you're trying... Uh, and, and exploring doing a little bit of wild food harvesting uh, it's always important to just you know obviously have a good field guide which I can leave some references for in the bottom of this video as well but it's good to know uh, in advance obviously which ones but as a golden rule just have a taste because our taste buds are pretty well adapted to being able to tell us what we do and don't want to eat and I've just actually also spotted some dandelion here which you can see distinctly. I'm just going to move this one aside so you can see it. And this is growing very happily there. Um, and it's got those typical lovely serrated edges and it's a very bitter green. Dandelion we use in medicine a lot. So particularly the leaves are great for the kidneys. It's a gentle detoxer and that bitterness stimulates digestion as well. The root, which we can't see, it's a big long tap root. When we pull that out, we use that for the liver. Super good herb for the liver. Okay, so there's just one more weed that I wanted to share with you today that you probably will find growing in your garden. This is in here amongst my celery and beetroot that is growing very happily at the moment. And it's called golden purslane. Now you can see it there. It's quite a sort of juicy, succulent looking plant. Reasonably small, but it grows on these little sort of juicy stems. Now, this plant has super high amounts of vitamin C in it and a lot of antioxidants. So it's one of those great ones you can include into the diet in many ways. Just sprinkling a few bits of these leaves on top of your salad is a great way of getting that extra medicinal boost as well. So that's one right there, easy to identify by its juicy succulent stems. And this is sacred basil. So while this one has been planted and is growing here, uh, it's not necessarily a weed, it is a perennial one, so it does keep growing unlike a lot of basils that are annuals. And sacred basil, or holy basil, is one of my favourite adrenal herbs that we use in clinic, also called tulsi. You might have seen tulsi tea. Tastes delicious. It is a strong basil flavour, uh, fairly intense compared to common basil. But what a magnificent plant. And you can see all these lovely flowering heads on it at the moment. And it grows very happily. It's quite a strong, gets a strong woody kind of stem there, which again shows you, I think, like the doctrine of signatures, that compared to other basils, this one has the strength and tenacity to keep going, which is what we like to use, um, that doctrine of signatures. The plant tends to give us ideas about what it's used for. And so when we think about the adrenal glands and how we need to use um, extra resources to have strength and resilience in challenging times, this plant gives you that sense of its robustness, its ability to shine and ability to continue to go on unlike its sister plants of the other basils. Holy basil. And there we are. I'll zoom in on that beautiful flower. And the bees love this one too.
as you can see right there you can probably even hear them it smells delicious whenever I walk here in the garden and brush past it I get that lovely smell of of basil okay so there you have it wild weeds in your diet I expect you now to include lots of different foods and you can see here in my garden uh, I've got lots of things growing so I, it's not just that we harvest the wild stuff we want to grow as many different types of varieties as we can and even if you've only got a small patch of garden it's really great just to include a few greens some herbs some things that you want to use fresh because we get that many more nutrients out of our fresh food than we do out of the store-bought stuff so even the best organic food unless you're harvesting it yourself you've already lost a lot of nutrients so make use of nature's abundance and find some of those wild weeds that are volunteering themselves in your garden low maintenance but awesome medicine nutrition and also good fun and taste okay that's it for now